working. Second week of this series, um, power evangelism. I can talk about so many things because I love to just stir up and love to talk about Jesus. I like to do, do it everywhere. I mean, if, if, if there's an opportunity to do ministry, I'm in. You know, call me. I'm in anything in, in 24-7, if you will. But God has me um, want to focus on a few things. Maybe get a perspective right, if you will. Sometimes we think of evangelism, evangelism but we're going to go down to the inner cities and we're going to minister. Or we're going to go to this group or this, 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 this place or that place and we're going to minister. And as you know, last week we talked about we should be ministering everywhere, right? Kingdom purpose for everyday life. And so I want to talk about a little, couple things that God put on my heart um, of the things to get our perspective right for, in the power of evangelism. And one of the things God um, was sharing with me in my heart was be ready at all times. Okay, we need to be ready at all times. And my mic broke all of a sudden. <laughs> no, the desk just crashed. Oh, no. Well, I talk loud, and if you can just calm down, okay, you'll fix it, and you'll get this done. But we're still here. God's still here in his presence. This is right. There's so many things behind the scenes that we see. Um, oh, I'm back. You know, sometimes God will still use us in the middle of our storm. Let me repeat that because I didn't hear any amen. <laughs> God will use us even in the middle of our storm. He'll, minister, he'll use us even when we don't understand what's going to be, what tomorrow looks like. Amen? And this is what the stuff will mean being, being ready, being, all, be, um, being ready at all times. But how can we have that faith, if you will? How can we have that confidence, if you will, if we're going to understand that it's something we're doing on our own ability, our own strength? And this is where God has helped me over the years, um, is this, that God doesn't want us to do anything without him. Matter of fact, Jesus says it. He says in John 15, 5, he says, I am the vine. And you are the branches. He who abides in me and I abide in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. And this is so powerful. This is something I think I've learned the hard way, but I've learned at an early stage in my Christian walk. I can't do nothing without Jesus. So then my compass, you hear me always say my compass is Jesus. I go back to Jesus. So if we're talking about the power of evangelism, evangelism, we're talking about being people that want to be a light to the world and a salt to the earth. And, and even Kelly, good word. You know, without salt, there's no flavor. But if we're going to be that way, we, we've got to understand that God could call us in the middle of our storm, in the middle of our situation. But if we say, I can't do that, Lord, because I don't have the ability, or I'm not ready, or I don't feel right, or I'm just going through this, or I'm going through that. We're missing out on the glory of God. We're missing out on his supernatural coming into our natural. We're missing out on the ability to see the glory of God because we're too focused on ourselves and on the situation. Again, LeClaimer, hey, we go through some stuff. And, I, I, and anybody who's going through anything, I am, I, I, I have, God's grace is sufficient. I'm never trying to make someone feel bad because they're struggling with something. This is common life. This happens in life every day. But if we truly know the truth that God's in us and he's bigger than our problems and he's bigger than our circumstances and he's bigger than our storm, it can produce faith. That, 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 like I was saying last week, that faith is running to the grace of the finished work of Christ. It's what Christ has done. Our faith isn't moving God. He's already moving. Our faith is moving us inside the grace of God to receive that grace, to receive that love, to receive that power, to receive that peace, to receive that healing, to receive that deliverance, amen, or whatever. So when I'm talking about um, being, being, um, going out and being ready at, at all times, or the power of, evangel power of evangelism, the power of being that light, to the world and the salt to the earth in everyday life, it's about realizing that we're not alone. 
and that we don't have to do it on our own abilities. That we don't do it for God, we do it with God. And his anointing, his grace, his mercy, his power, his love, that stirs us up to say, yes, what can I do? I love Sunday morning gatherings. I love, we're having something tonight. Matter of fact, come tonight. I'm telling you, God put it on my heart. He goes, I feel, he said, I want to do a healing service, a breakthrough service tonight. And I just said it to Kevin. Kevin goes, yeah, let's run with it. I'm believing, and we're inviting friends outside of our church. This ain't a DCC thing. It's just, it's just about the city, the, the church in this city. Let's come tonight. If you want breakthrough or if you want to come and help minister, I believe there's going to be breakthrough tonight. And so I'm like, then God goes, if, 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 you, if you do this, I'll show up. You know, and I'm like, of course he shows up. He lives with us, inside us. But I'm saying, I believe something. So a friend told me last week, he goes, dude, you know how powerful that is? I go, what do you mean? He goes, you just told me that God put that on your heart to do. So that exempts, that's a good idea. That's a God idea. And you better believe something's going to happen if God says do it. Scott just talked about yielding and submitting to the voice of the Lord. So something's happening tonight. If you want to come and see, come and, and be part of it. Amen. It's just going to be, we're just going to be doing worship through the whole time, but we're going to have time for body ministry, prayer, and anything else. I'm, I'm believing and expecting God to show up. So then here, let's just go back into our own strength. I'll just run with this for a minute. So now I'm like, I wonder how many people are going to come. I'm, I hope a lot of people come because I'm all excited and I'm hoping a lot of people come. See, now I'm already, and, and God goes, what do you care how many people come? Just know I'm, sh- I'm going to show my glory tonight. Amen. See, because this is the work. I, this is the, the I, I get to, I get, yes, Lord, we're going to do it. And I'm all excited. And all of a sudden, I start going to my own, you know, my, hey, how many people can we fit in this room? You know, can, who, the, God's glory is going to be here. But see, this is where we get mixed up. We're leaning on understanding. It's just five of us, man. We're going to have a great time tonight. Don't miss out on tonight. I'm not trying to, <laughs> trying to build the numbers. I'm just, I'm just excited. But you see how all of a sudden our minds start going back to in our own understanding. Like, wow, I hope a lot of people come because it's going to be good tonight. This is going to be good tonight. Because you know what? Because God's here and God wants to do something to the body of Christ. He wants us to stir us up so we're not stuck, that we're not broken, that we're not sick, that we're not in bondage, that we get freed up. Even, it, it, I just feel sometimes it's not even bond. I just feel like the church has been stuck and God's saying, come on, my children, rise, rise up. Amen? Amen. So going back to this being ready... Um, in season, or all time, in season, out of season, it's the, it's the perspective that, hey, I'm doing it with God and, and in God. And I love this. In, in John 17, 23 and 20, excuse me, John 17, 20 to 23, it's actually the whole chapter of um, John 17. He's actually praying for himself, and then he's praying for his disciples, then he's praying for those who believe. Who are those who believe? We are those who believe. Those who believe, we are. And he's talking about it, and I, I'm going to read it because I love this. I love this. It says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they might be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. And they may also be one in us, that the world might believe that you sent me, and the glory which you've given me, I have given them, that they will be one just as we are one. I am in them and you and me, and that they might be perfect in one, and that the world might know that you have sent me, and that you have loved them as you love me. But like this, um, and your glory which I give, you have given me, I've given them. Who's them? Who's them? We are them. His glory in us. When we talk about the power of evangelism, we talk about going out there, we've got to understand that it's in us. The Bible says the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in us if we're believers. Do we believe that? But I'm going through some stuff. I know. Guys, I can tell you this last week and a half has been crud, cruddy for me. I just don't have time to complain about it. Well, at least I might hear it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Excuse me. I, my best friend, my, my crown... My wife from 31 years has been there for me at all times. It's tough sometimes being in leadership, both in business or in ministry. Sorry, camera guys, I'm having a good time moving around. But it's the truth. It's tough being it. You get, you, you get let down. You get wounded expectations. You just get, you know, you try to fix things beyond your control at all anytime you're in leadership. Um, you start doubting yourself. You start doubting yourself. 
I love the minister. I love the minister. I love it. And, and, and it's, 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 I'm constantly being accused how I don't speak well. I'm constantly, to, from my own self, from the enemy whispering in me. Like, you, you, didn't, you didn't finish your sentence. You know, I, I, you didn't say that, pronounce that word right. You didn't, you didn't do this right. Where does that come from? comes from the enemy. Who said that? Amen, Jen. That's right. It doesn't come from God. See, what I'm saying is sometimes when we want to just be that light, we just want to go love somebody. You, well, who, what makes you think you can do that? Who do you think you are? I think I'm a child of the king called to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So I'm telling you, even sometimes myself getting up here, I love doing it. I'm looking forward to doing it. I, I, I pray into it for weeks ahead of time. Be honest with you, I, I, I prepare my message months and weeks ahead of time. Because it's, it's easy for me because I can't memorize things, so it's got to be from the heart. Then it becomes easy. But I find myself talking really fast. I find myself not finishing my sentences. I find myself not pronouncing words when I go back and listen to myself. And, I, and every time these thoughts come to me, and I'm like, I'm going to stop listening to those thoughts. Because I don't have to come with excellent speech. I can come with demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? I'm walking with Jesus. Jesus is in me. I got something to say. That God loves you, and he loves you, and he will meet you right where you're at. Right where you're at. See, I didn't even say that right. He'll meet you right where you're at. And also, he'll help you go where you're supposed to go. But if the enemy can stop us and get us stuck, we're going to get messed up. Amen? Peter talks about it in Peter, 2 Peter um, chapter 1, 2 through 4. He talks about his divine nature in us. We have his divine nature in us. Think about that. If we're really going to talk about the power of evangelism, we're really going to talk about going out in, into our communities, into our cities, in our workplaces, where we, go, we need to realize that we're complete in Christ and we have his divine nature in us. And it's not of us of our own, but it's Christ in us. And that gives us the ability to go out and change the world because we can hear his voice. Um, Scott was saying that as we yield and submit, he'll give us revelation. Has anybody ever experienced this, this, this hearing God say, go tell that person you love them? Or go, and then once you do that, all of a sudden you start just be able to love on that person and doors open because you just, you just took the first step of obedience. It's going to be hard for us to take that step of obedience if we think we got to do it in our own strength and our own ability. If we don't remind ourselves that we have his divine nature in us. And that we can abide and be one with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That we can bring his gospel, his good news, in us and through us as we trust his anointing. Is this ministering to anybody? Because sometimes we do it on our own strength. So, so today, if you feel like God has put thoughts in your heart and stuff like that, and you were too concern to step forward or maybe you just felt like you weren't ready to because you're going through some stuff I, en I encourage you today so do it anyways Amen. do it anyways do you know when I'm struggling seriously when I'm struggling my and I'm really starting to get discouraged I start setting appointments up and go and encourage people and minister to people I have learned that over the year okay years you're struggling Chris go love somebody and every time I love somebody and minister to somebody encourage somebody I get encouraged myself because when you give is giving back, pressed down, shaking together, and overrunning. That's just not about finances. That's God's truth. You give out love, you want to be loved, and go love somebody. You feel lonely and you haven't felt love, go love somebody in Jesus' name. Go love somebody and let them know how important they are how, and how much God loves them. It reminds you how much God loves you, amen? But if we stay stuck and we're like, I can't do anything, I, I feel miserable. Then go, to, go, go find someone in your community that will help you walk that out because God wants you to be that light and he wants you to be that salt to the world, amen? Is that good or what? I think that's good. <laughs> I encourage myself. Um, so that was one thing we talked about is because if we're gonna be ready at all times, we gotta realize it's not a, us our own, a, us doing it ourselves. It's cr us in Christ, Christ, amen? Second thing that God was, um, just encouraged me too when we talk about evangelism is talking about our testimony, the power of our testimony. You know, Revelation says that by, they overcame by him, uh, but they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our, their testimony. Our testimony is so powerful because guess why? So we don't have to get in philosophies or the, uh, um, the, this is what God did to me. 
We don't have to get in these disputes of, well, I don't know if I believe in God, and I don't really believe he's a good God, you know. I remember sharing my testimony about how God's love, and I had a guy go, stop right there. I don't know if I believe in God or not, but I wouldn't want a God that would allow all this murder and all this abuse that happens to kids and all this world. Who wants a God like that? I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Who said that's God? I said, that's the devil. He goes, I knew you were going to say that. Who created the devil? I, I, I said, God. He goes, exactly. Why would he create him? What kind of God would create a devil? Because he's a foreseeing God, right? Why would he create the devil if he's a foreseeing God? I said, because he created all his creation with free will, including his angels, so he could have worshipers in spirit and truth. And he had a redemption plan before the foundation of the earth that Christ would come and redeem with this free will angel that would, that would walk away from his kingdom. And that's the angel that tries to lie to us. He's no longer an angel. That's where the devil comes in. He took his free will and he's trying to lie to us. The Bible says he's the father of all lies and all his resources are lies. Do you know our biggest battles between our ears of the lies that we'll believe, the whispers from the enemy? But when we start talking about our testimony, no one can steal that. That's my testimony. How many times have you heard my testimonies up here? It's like, God, Chris talks about his testimony. That's right. That's, that's, that's my testimony. It's, it's powerful if you start to listen to it. Amen? I tell you, there's so many testimonies. You know, like even, in, in, even me and Lisa, like, um, you know, even like I think last week, um, Lisa mentioned something like, you don't have to be sick. And, and to some people, that could really be, you know, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Is that sensitive? She said, I think she said it during communion. I can't remember. But is that sensitive? Is that, whoa, whoa. You know, I, you know but let me tell you my, our perspective of it. And then maybe that will encourage you. Because our hearts, mean least, is to encourage people. You know, but someone who's struggling with sickness, that could really smack you between the eyes, right? Like, whoa. But I believe we don't have to be sick. I believe that. We've seen miracles after miracles. I can remember when Lisa um, hurt her knee, she tore her meniscus and, and stuff like that. And she was, and um, Kevin had a word. This was years ago. I mean, and, um, and she heals. I, I believe that God wants to um, heal somebody's knee. And three, people, three ladies came up. And Kevin prayed for all of them and prayed. Lisa was one of them. Did you know she thanked God from that Sunday on that she's healed? But you know it took three years before that manifested her knee? As a matter of fact, it got so, it got so irritating. I said, this, because we love doctors. Doctors are part of the healing team. I said, honey, just go get the surgery. You know, we already used our deductible. You know how you can use all that. I said, just go get it done. She goes, yeah, you're right. You're right. So then she scheduled the surgery. There's a testimony, right? She scheduled the surgery. So um, for Monday, she had to come in for Monday to go get her surgery on her knee. But she, she was just walking on a treadmill. She goes, God, I know you're the healer. I believe that, I don't, I, that you're the healer of all times. I, and I thank you for this. But I don't, and all of a sudden, I didn't know this at the time, but she told me the story. All of a sudden, I'm hearing the treadmill. Like going, I'm hearing Lisa. She's running on the treadmill on Thursday, the Thursday before the Monday, right? And she's running. She's crying. And she goes, man, my knee's healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. And by the way, she called the doctor and said, hey, um, I'm, I'm, I, don't need, I don't need a surgery. Amen? Amen. 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 We're people, we've seen miracles. I can remember Christian. He's the camera guy. Um, he was just a toddler. He, um, um, he's just a toddler. Um, just learning to walk. We lived in Sparta. And I, could, I was out in the backyard and I was really far away. And I seen Christian walking like, towards the steps. I'm going, Lisa, Lisa. And it all happened. He fell. And for some reason, when you're a little baby, you don't know how to put your hands out to protect yourself. Smacks his face. His nose. Smashed his nose. And it was just like broken. Or it was just crooked. And I'm like, get the car. We're going to the hospital. I mean, like we broke his nose. Lisa goes, calm down. Go away. <laughs> exactly what she said. And she prayed for that, his nose. This, this is my test. It's a true story. It snapped. He didn't, she didn't push it back. It must have, something snapped back, and he was instantly healed. True story. That, that's the kind of God we, are, we participate with. That's our Father in heaven. That's Jesus. And another story one time, all these little, when, we were little, when our kids were little, um, I remember um, Haley, our, our middle daughter, she was just a baby, and we were at my father-in-law's house, and he, he had this big, beautiful house. And you know them folding doors that you have? You can buy those as kits. They're pre-made. These were custom-made ones. These things were solid oak doors, and, and so they were solid. Well, I didn't see, and, and I'm moving, and, and, I'm, and you know, Haley's just a toddler, and my, um, 
and she's walking through around my legs, and I didn't see it, and I went and shut these doors, and I just pushed them. Her finger were inside it, and I pushed them, and it was stuck in there, and we pulled out. It looked just like it was flat, and it turned black, and it looked like, it, looked, I, it almost probably exploded, if you will. It just was so flat. It looked like the cartoons, if you will. It's all blown up. I'm like, oh my gosh, Lisa! I mean, I get really emotional. I'm crying, because I heard my daughter go, get the, we're going to the hospital! Her fingers in. She goes, leave the room, okay? I mean, so I've been, I've been kicked out of the room many times by my wife just that because I'm like the ah, her finger and I'm feeling guilty because I'm the idiot that slammed her finger in the door in the first place and I'm not lying she and she prayed for it and literally she said be healed in the name of Jesus and her finger went right back to normal and she was healed that wasn't that finger sorry <laughs> her finger was healed um, amen but these are the testimonies these are the testimonies that we have. So when we believe that we can believe for our health. Everybody, a few of us remember about three years ago, a little over three years ago, I had a blood clot. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I thought I just had gas, to be honest with you. It was horrible. So it went on and went on. I can't tell you all the stories. I mean, no. I know it's not, 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 if it was a small group, I would tell you that story. So you can ask me, small group, the whole story of how I tried to get the gas out, but it wasn't good. But anyways, so long story short, about two in the morning, I knew something was wrong with my body. And I go, honey, we got to go to the hospital. There's something wrong with me. I was in so much pain. And I found out, um, so I go there, and, and they go, oh, oh, they gave me a scan. They go, oh, yeah, you got a major blood clot. We're going to have to, this is Zeeland Hospital. We live in Hudsonville. We're going to have to rush you in an ambulance down to um, um, Spectrum, and we're going to have to do emergency surgery on your gro- through your groin. I go, call Kevin, call Chad, call somebody. I mean, I go, my faith isn't there. I mean, come on, sometimes when you're in a battle, I mean, I, I was not fighting that. I was like, Call somebody. And Lisa goes, we're not calling. By that time, it was like 3.30, 4.00 in the morning. I'm not calling anybody. I go, no, we don't need to call them. Lisa, I'm not, my faith isn't there. You know, I do not want nothing messing with my groin. And, 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 and going through, just going through there with a vein. They're gonna go. So anyways, they didn't do that, thank God. But I was in the hospital and for three days. And you know what? My wife had a hard time ever seeing me because we just, in 31, we just, the sickness is, we believe we, that that doesn't have to stay on us. We were believing God. So it was rough for me. And did you know I was so discouraged? I was speaking death over myself. I was just, man, what, what you know, wondering why I had this. Because that's another thing. If you have a blood, a blood clot, and a lot of people do when injuries or, you know, you know, stuff like that. But if you just have one, it can become an issue. So saying that, um, uh, the first day and a half was miserable. And all of a sudden, I just, God said, what are you doing? All you're doing is focusing how discouraged you are. No, okay, we get, he goes, stop it. Stop it. And I just repented for that. I tell you what, the last, the last, the last three days, man, I got, I got some, I told him bring my work, my, my shorts and stuff, my workout clothes. I had my IV in there. I had to have an IV. And, I'm, and, I, and the nurse says, if you walk this whole floor, the 11th floor, one time it's a quarter mile. I walked it 30, 40 times. And I'm praying. And I, hey, walk around the nurse station. Hey, I walked. I just said, man, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be healed. So then I go to the doctor. Um, and I guess it was like almost like 10 inch um, blood clot in one of my veins. 10 inches. Then he goes, this is major. So I, he, I had to go to a blood specialist and all this stuff. And he said, he said um, hey, Chris, I want you to be on blood thinners. You're, probably, you're gonna be on it your whole life. And I said, no, I, I don't wanna be on it a whole life. He goes, well, you know, I'm not saying we have to have the same dose, but um, you're gonna have to be on your whole life. And I said, no, I don't want to. I'm praying and believing God in, in Jesus' name that I don't wanna do it. I said, I don't know where your faith is. That's where my faith is. I said, so tell me another alternative. What, and he goes, well, uh, okay, your, your, your vein is very damaged. Would you stay on them for six months and let me give you another CAT scan? And if that's healed, we'll talk about it then. I said, sure. For six months, I kept saying, my, my veins are healed in Jesus' name. Every day, my veins are healed in Jesus' name. Every day, my veins are healed in Jesus' name. I'm complete. I'm going to be blood clot free. And six months, I went in there. I had another one. My vein was completely healed, or completely, it's fully completely healed. He goes, okay, he goes, I'm still suggesting that you'll be on blood clot medicine. And there's nothing wrong with being on blood clot medicine. I just felt I was believing not. And I said, well, can, I said, I don't want to. He goes, tell, me, t- tell you what, Chris, I'll make this deal with you. If you're believing that, I'll, I'll let you believe that. Then would you meet me every six months and let me check your blood for clot? And I said, I can do that for the rest of my life. I don't care. And but guess what? There's been four times or three times I've been there. I go every month, every six months. Say, hey, check it out. How's it going? Good. And my blood is not clotting and I don't need a blood clot medicine. Amen? 
This is the kind of stuff I'm saying, guys, that I believe that, but, if, but again, if someone in this room said, I'm on blood clot medicine, then praise God, stay on it until God puts it on your heart to do that. Or maybe you need it. I don't know. You see where I'm going with this? We've got to be able to be bold enough to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, and by his stripes we're healed. We've got to talk about that stuff. We can't just do it because maybe some of us are struggling with that. We have to be able to say, God heals today. And by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. You know? And if you want me, I will lay hands on you and join with the faith of God. Now, we don't need to lay hands on people. God can heal without that, but he also says lay his hands on the sick and they'll recover. So I'm willing to lay hands on the sick. Who's willing to lay hands on the sick and see if they recover? And what if we didn't take that responsibility whatever happens? We're just going to be obedient to what God says. Amen? Amen. So this is the stuff, telling the testimony. Tell someone about what Jesus has done for you. Tell someone what God has done. Do you know, even in the Old Testament, um, God always told the children of Israel to do this for remembrance. When they went through the Jordan, hey, grab 12 stones. Remind what I have done for you. Remember, re this is remembrance. God wants us to remind how good he is. And Jesus says it in communion. That's why we have communion every Sunday. Do this often in remembrance of me. Remind yourself that I'm your deliverer. I'm your healer. I'm your savior. Amen? This so, so, so our testimonies are so powerful. And I can go on and on and talk about how good God is. Amen? I got about four minutes left. And, and, and the last thing is the po about ev power evangelism is the power of prayer. James 5, 16 says, The effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Do you know you need to see yourself as righteous? If you're truly going to pray effectively, what, 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 what are you saying, Chris? See yourself as righteous before the Father. Through Jesus Christ, you are now, you are a new creation. You are righteous before the Father. So now, our hope, now instead of just like begging God, saying, God, is this okay? I hope this. No, you can come boldly before the throne room of Christ and God and say, God, I thank you that you've made me righteous. So I thank you you hear my prayers. I thank you. Do you see what I'm saying? If we're going to be people that want to be that light to the world and the salt to the earth that goes out, we need to be people of prayer, people of intercession, people that declare God's word and say some stuff like maybe God wants to see you healed. God wants to see you delivered. God wants to see you free from fear and anxiety or depression. Amen? Does that make sense? This is the stuff. This is what the good news is. The gospel, the good news. We all don't want to hear the hell and brimstone messages because it, it, just, it just kind of destroys, the, this kind of wrecks the true grace and love of God. But we also need, need to hear the message of God is a God that's supernatural, a God of miracles, a God that, we sing these songs, Waymaker. We sing these songs. You know what? Singing them songs is not enough. We want to see it come alive in this church. We want to see it come alive in this city. We want to see it come alive in this nation and to all the nations that he is the way maker. And who is he going to use? He's going to use you. He's going to use me. Well, God can do it without you. Absolutely. But he wants to do it with us. It's his mandate. Him, um, Jesus says, and, and look, go out to the, all the world. Go out. Amen? Amen? But when we don't understand something, we, don't, we, don't, can't, we can't get clarity in it. We get stuck. Go to the Father and start praying, interceding, praying in the Spirit. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Keeping yourself in the love of God. Amen? I'm telling you, God wants, God wants us to be people that will be believe in him at all times. It says the just shall live by faith. If the enemy can get us stuck, if the enemy can get us confused, if the enemy can get us feeling unworthy or even shame, like that was a good word to hand about shame. Come on, don't we sometimes get frustrated with ourselves? We could have, should have, would have. Don't stop just because you could have, should have, would have. There's new mercies every morning. Rise up the next morning and say, God, what do you have for me today? I'm your child. You're my God. I'm your beloved. I belong to you. And I'll always belong to you. So have your way with me today. Yesterday was a rough day, Lord. Today is a new day. Today is a new day. Do you know the enemy will get us caught up in our past and get us stuck in our past? And you know what? A lot of times... A lot of times the past is so rough and, the, and there's a lot of things that um, I wouldn't, couldn't even explain, but God knows your past and he's there, but he also wants to bring you for your, your future, to go forward with him. Will you grab a hold of his hands? Will you run into his arms of grace and allow him 
And I'm telling you, the power of prayer, that's where you just come in. Prayer isn't just giving God a, a wish list. Prayer is actually encountering God, participating with God, he, declaring and hearing. What is God saying to you today? Chris, I don't know. Then get around someone who does know because he's saying that he loves you and he wants you free, delivered, healed, strong, and mighty. He wants you to be that light into the world and a salt to the earth. He wants you to be an ambassador of Christ and a minister of reconciliation. He wants you to stand strong in the finished work of Christ. He wants you to say, yes, I am a believer of Jesus Christ and I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ and I choose Jesus and I will shine that love and I'll shine that grace and I'll shine that power wherever I go because that's what the world needs to see. We, the world needs to see us differently. He doesn't want to see us bickering with each other in churches. He doesn't want to see us stuck. Why do we separate ourselves as the church of Jesus? As, a, as, as sons and daughters of the living God. As we just start believing in that, Amen. God wants to do something in DCC, but he wants to do something in this city, amen? He wants to do something in our homes, in our marriages, in our children. He wants to do something in our workplaces, in our schools, amen? amen. Who's gonna believe that? Amen. What if you had nothing to say and just go pray for someone and God just heals them? What are you gonna say about that? I don't know what to say. Just, go, just tell them God loves them. Amen? Amen. The band can come on back up. Um, I want to pray for us because I really want us to get stirred up. And I understand we're having situations. Gosh, I could tell you my list of situations I'm having. But I have to still get up here, right? Because, Kevin, I'm not coming in today. I'm having a bad day. No, I look forward to it. Because guess what? My bad day just got dissolved into the hope of Jesus Christ. Now I got to take everything I say and bring that into Monday. I gotta take everything I said and practice what I preach into Monday. And guess what? Sometimes Monday really stinks. And, and the guy goes, What are you gonna practice what you preach? Amen. Amen. Can can we walk away today with something, something that we say, yes, I I I am not gonna believe this lie anymore. I'm gonna rise up. And, I, and amen. Amen. So so can everybody stand? So, Father, we thank you for your great love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving grace. And we thank you. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. We trust you. So we just, we just cast all our cares upon you right now, and we just receive your strength. We just receive all that you have for us. We receive breakthrough. We receive healing, deliverance. We thank you for open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, and open our, open our hearts to understand what you're calling us to do, Father God. We thank you that we're leaving different than when we came. We're leaving full of hope, full of glory, full of your strength, full of your wisdom in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God. We thank Thank you right here. If anybody's here who's been struggling with anything, Father God, that you will come and meet them right where they're at, Father God. And it will be testimony for their tomorrow in Jesus' name. So blessing and every person here, every family, marriage, home, destiny, calling here, blessing on them that you're faithful to complete the good work you started in each one of us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. God bless.